All right, this is AP Classroom Unit 9, uh, Free Response Question A, Part C. So now they've uh, told us um, in this, this is Part C, let uh, R be equal R1 theta plus R2 theta uh, on the interval 0 to pi, uh, find the greatest distance from any point on the graph to the origin. Um, so a lot of people did a lot of weird things on here, but uh, none of them was very close to what we're doing. People were doing like finding arc length. People were doing integrals. Almost everybody did an integral on this, but it says find the greatest distance. So uh, that's a max or min problem. Because it's a max or min problem, we're going to be looking at a derivative, not an integral. So what we want to think about is, um, you know, what is the distance to the origin. So when people are doing integrals, a lot of times that's like getting the length of the curve. But what does it mean distance from the origin? So I don't know what this function r1 plus r2 of theta looks like, you know, uh, uh, but whatever it looks like, maybe it looks like some weird thing like this where I add those two circles, all right? And here's the origin. So what does it mean the distance to the origin? Well, that's just the value of r, all right? So this is a function r of theta. The distance from the origin to that point is just the length uh, of the of r, so it's uh, it's just r of theta. So what we're really doing is finding a maximum value of r, and since we're finding that on a closed interval, and it says the greatest distance, we're really looking for an absolute max on a closed interval. All right, we're looking for an absolute max on a closed interval. In that case, what we want to do is find all the critical points and the endpoints, and we, we just want to choose the largest value, choose the largest. That's how you find absolute max on a closed interval, and that comes up in uh, free response question uh, B, number two, as well. All right, so we need to find the critical points, we need to find the endpoints, and then just choose the largest, you know, uh, R value in this case, choose the largest value for R. All right, so let's look at what our function is. R is equal to um, cosine theta, plus 2 sine theta. So that means that r prime equals negative sine theta plus 2 cosine theta. And we're going to set that equal to 0 because that's how we find our critical points, right? And by the way, if you just wrote this, um, the derivative is equal to 0, you got a point for finding a derivative and setting it to equal to 0. Even if you get the rest of it wrong, we do this, we got one point. All right, so um, we need to solve that. Uh, we can't really solve that analytically by any simple means. So what we're going to do is solve it graphically. So I went ahead and already put in uh, negative sine theta plus 2 cosine theta. All right, so that's going to allow us to uh, look at the graph and find where the x-intercept of that graph is. So I just graph it. There's my graph. This looks like my critical point right there. So I do second calc zero. That's what your TI calls x-intercepts. So I go ahead and hit that. It wants a left bound and a right bound. So we're going to set a left bound over there. And we're going to set a right bound over here. And then we're going to um, look at our um, what appears to be our x-intercept because that's going to be that seed value for the iterative process again. So we want it to be relatively good. We hit enter and we get 1.107. All right, so that's the critical point. So um, uh, 1.107 theta equals 1.107 is the only critical point on the, inter on the interval. But remember, you also have to check the endpoints. So what we really want to do is set up a table uh, of values of theta, uh, 1.107, and uh, our interval is bounded by 0 and pi, so we'll look at theta equals 0 and theta equals pi. You can organize these in different ways. I always like to put together the critical point and the endpoints. And, you know, maybe we would have more than one critical point. We could put in more than one critical point. All right, now we just need to uh, find the value of cosine theta plus 2 sine theta for each of these values. So um, let's do, um, quitting out of here, we're going to do cosine of 1.107. Now, so I, since I still have that as my x va variable again, I can do cosine of x and uh, plus it's cosine plus 2 sine? Yeah. Plus 2 sine of x and see what that is. And it is a 2.236. All right, so 2.236. So um, r of theta equals 2.236. And then for my endpoints, I have 0. Well, let's see, uh, for if I plug in 0, I mean, I could put this in my calculator, but I know the cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. So uh, r of 
zero is just going to be equal to uh, one. And for theta equals pi, r of pi, um, I have uh, cosine theta is negative one, two sine theta is still zero, so I have negative pi. And since I'm looking for the greatest distance, that's the maximum, I have that right here. So I can say um, the max distance is 2.236. And I don't even have to do a derivative test on this because I have a closed interval. There are no other critical points at 1.107. There are no other endpoints. This is the largest value there is, so it's a maximum. You can do second derivative test. You know, we can see that if we look at the graph, right, we can see that uh, R prime is changing from positive to negative. So we know we're looking at a relative max, but just establishing that it's a relative max doesn't establish that it's an absolute max. We need to look at the endpoints because it could have been one of the endpoints was the absolute max. Um, you can do a second derivative test on this. It's not too hard to get the second derivative of this and show that the second derivative of 1.107 is negative. But again, that only establishes a relative max. To get the absolute max, we need, clo we need on our closed interval, we need to see the uh, critical points and the endpoints and just see what the y values are, in this case, the r values that go with them. And that's how the max distance is 2.236. So the moral of the story is, you're looking for a maximum, greatest distance. How do I find a maximum? You do a derivative. So if your solution didn't have a derivative in it, you were not even doing the right thing. So you need to think about how do I maximize something I do a derivative.